Noosa Shire has long been a leader in demonstrating the strong links between environmental values, economic prosperity and a healthy, thriving community. Transport emissions account for a minimum of 30% of Noosa's community emissions. This figure is based only on residential registrations and does not include tourism transport emissions, so the total percentage would be much higher. As population pressures increase, it's more important than ever to find opportunities to reduce our reliance on petrol-based transport. What better way than to combine this with the opportunities to enhance our physical and mental well-being while doing so? Electric vehicles are certainly a step towards emissions reduction, but getting more people walking, cycling, scooting or using public transport in Noosa would do so much more. So, how do we get our people in Noosa out there walking, cycling and feeling safe while doing our bit? Building attractive, convenient and safe alternative transport options in the region is going to take bold initiative measures and strategic thought. We had a conversation with our community to find out what they think are the solutions. Key priorities identified are safety, connectivity, maintenance, ease of navigation, reduction of cars, increases in sustainable transport options, and attractiveness. The ideal would be separate pathways for walkers, bikes, scooters, and e-bikes. Micromobility designated lanes would be great. I saw from the walk today that there is a lot of um, bumps in the pathways. Um, even me, who has all ability to walk, um, had a bit of a trip. So we definitely need to you know, get council onto that and make sure that our paths are very accessible. There's always going to be opportunities each year. We do invest in implementing uh, the cycling and walking strategy. Uh, this year, in fact, here in Karoi, we made the link out to the private school. So that's something so the kids can get on their bikes. We prioritise based on things like access to schools or access to the shopping centre. Um, the other big ones we're, we're looking at uh, trying to get funds for are the big interregional links. So the one we're probably going to be focusing on next, and we've started small sections of it, is that link between the top of the Sunshine Coast going all the way through to Noosa Heads and then over to Tawantan. So they are areas where, where you should see progressive investment on the coast, uh, not just uh, to get the residents around, but obviously if we can get tourists riding bikes rather than their cars to look at the beach, uh, that'll be an added bonus. So there's a super map that helps you orient when you're planning how to cycle around the Noosa area. I think the tricky thing is in a couple of spaces where a trail stops, you then have to pause and orient as to where the trail's gone. So some markers that actually help you understand in the moment exactly where you are and where to go next would be really helpful. Noosa Shire has a multitude of pathways and cycleways for locals and tourists alike. However, we need an improved action strategy for transport in the region for more people to feel safe and to participate. This ride was definitely Gindia Road, which is the sealed road that's been closed off and now is um, exclusively for cyclists, which was incredible. It was really peaceful, really pleasant, uh, felt very safe, and I really enjoyed that. Crossing through Anusa Road to get to the road up to the Mountain Guru Lookout was a little hectic. I definitely didn't enjoy that. I uh, wouldn't look forward to doing that again, and I definitely wouldn't bring small children in that area. And then also getting from my house in Anusa Junction to Bunnings, there are a couple of roundabouts that um, are a little bit dicey and I don't really enjoy either. It's a little tough negotiating the traffic in the very centre of Noosa. Cars generally go very slowly, but you need to make a series of crossings uh, where there are often queued cars. So you have to have eye contact with the drivers and uh, make your way across. Um, there's a couple of bridges uh, that are quite narrow as you come into Noosa along the river. and. It's a little intimidating to push yourself into the middle of the road and ride ahead of the cars across the bridge. So what we've done is we have a lot of tourists coming in, though they want to go for a ride and know they want to see Noosa, but they're not really sure where they're going. So just using a basic Google Maps app, we've basically plotted out routes that take you through Lake Nella wetlands, uh, out through the Toronto National Park, along the river, out the back of Noosa, through the mangroves and everything. And really all we've done is find the paths on Google Maps, jot out the line, and then saved it. And when you rent a bike from us, we give you the password to the web page, open it up, and essentially you've got your little GPS beacon and we point you in the right direction and you keep the blue dot on the red line and off you go. And yeah, it gives people a lot of access to places like even Lake Denala, it's beautiful, but if you didn't know it was there, you probably wouldn't realize the whole bike track just running around through the bush there. So. 
it gives people a very soft adventure way of accessing Noosa. Like everyone comes, they go to the beach, cool, I've been to the beach, what else do I do? And getting them on bike tracks and they love it is just a nice way to finish the day, extend the day. The community has responded through a walking and cycling strategy survey, which gives feedback for what they feel would improve the uptake of more walking and cycling in Noosa. There are also considerations for tourists in the region. We can all make a difference by planting seeds in our community, so let's grow an attractive transport network today by walking and cycling more and driving our cars less to embrace the change. In setting an example, we can encourage more of our visitors and community alike to engage in the Noosa Better by Nature experience.